Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing. We'll be spending the next hour or so discussing some hints and tips and ways of planning and working through the upcoming year in a selling situation. We'll be spending a bit of time with uh, some different goal setting that comes as part of it, some different use of portfolio and a number of other ways of approaching our upcoming selling opportunities as we transition away from the annual election period for those folks that are active in the Medicare Advantage arena. The, today's topic is still pertinent for anyone who's not active in that space with some ideas as to how we can leverage different situations to our advantage and grow our agencies throughout the year. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be made available as it uploads at our website at premiersmi.com and on our YouTube channel as well. You'll notice in the software system, there's a section for both questions and chat. We ask that you put your questions in the questions box. Normally we cover a number of them through the course of the presentation, but we will check periodically to make certain that we answer your inquiries and make certain you get the most out of your investment of your time here today. Part of what we will do as well is since we approach this with a viewpoint to satisfy uh, the inquiries of an agent, if you're new to the business or more experienced, there'll be some things that might seem remedial, some or maybe not. And it never hurts to go back and visit and revisit the things that have made us as successful as possible up until this point. So let's start with a little bit of information about our organization. We are a national marketing organization founded in 1968. That's part of the Integrity Marketing Platform. We're licensed in all 50 states, uh, working with agents as an insurance wholesaler through contracts that are at the highest possible commission levels with recruiting contracts available to those who qualify. That is one of the first questions that we would answer when we plan our upcoming year is, are we looking to grow our own personal business or an agency? And that might make a key difference as to how you plot your course for the remainder of 22 and going into 2023. We work through a full portfolio of products that include the Medicare Advantage programs that are necessary to satisfy the needs of that part of our population. So it includes the Medicare Advantage and the Medicare Supplement Plans, Part D prescription programs, those standalone PDP programs, but also a full portfolio of life insurance and annuity products, final expense life insurance and pre-need plans, plus long and short-term care programs and disability income plans, and the ancillary benefits that can be a key factor, particularly now as we go back and re revisit the folks that we worked with through the annual election period. Keep in mind, I said worked with, not necessarily enrolled or uh, assigned to ourselves, however we want to put it. These are programs that we can use to address additional needs that we have discovered in the recent past, but also use them as a means to uh, prospect as well. The Medicare Advantage programs, depending upon your neck of the woods, some of the things that you may have encountered through the annual election period as a Medicare agent is a need for different Medicare Advantage carriers. We have the national carriers and many of the strong regional carriers that can make a difference for you in your market. And that philosophy carries over into the prescription drug programs as well. And most of these come as a adjunct for the contract that you have with Medicare Advantage anyway. A couple of notable exceptions. Mutual of Omaha, that's that standalone PDP program that they offer their drug plan that is independent of their other products. So it's a different contract. And Clever RX with, well, it's actually a discount program, not a uh, prescribed PDP program. We look at Medicare supplements. This is an area that can be of great focus for folks that have a background looking for the higher income people within uh, the Medicare arena. Not that it excludes everyone else or, or agents that work a mix of the approach, but this gives us 
an opportunity to have a broad portfolio of products and we have specific tools that can help you be successful in this space when it comes to selling and marketing the nice thing about this as well is it gives you the opportunity to address all the needs that you encounter with the medicare population because you never know who am i going to talk to what is their best choice and that depends upon their circumstances of course when we look at the ancillary products as i mentioned earlier in each of these categories you have the national leaders there for you in that space but many of these folks come up with unique marketing opportunities that we can leverage for our full portfolio of products and there's a couple two three of them actually microsites as part of your contract you have the the place where you can drive people to uh, on the internet to complete or actually even start the selling process for these programs particularly helpful when we are active in the medicare advantage or medicare supplement market because there's always an extra need for certain people well not always but very frequently and this can help satisfy that need uh, because they stack on top of whatever benefits they may have already have in uh, their coverage portfolio. So when we look at Medicare, of course, we see the aging of the baby boomers, the fact that some are working past 65, but we're influenced by the folks that are under the age of 65 and access Medicare because of medical disability. The age bracket might well be a determining factor as to how you approach that population and as to whether or not it's a key component in your plan moving forward. However, you decide to work and grow your agency, it, you have opportunities across the board with different programs for different ages is the point I'm trying to make here. Because in each of these situations, then you have an opportunity to leverage different marketing opportunities aimed at that particular population so if you're looking for the medicare supplement folks you may be well approaching them with a different marketing approach through direct mail or the use of social media or however you're reaching out and that same thought process may be altered if you're pursuing the folks that just have part d coverage because there are folks that do that could be a key component for us as to how we search for folks that need our services. And then, of course, the Medicare Advantage programs. I'm biting my tongue here a little bit before I proceed because they're in, they're in the news, so to speak. You turn on a television set on an off channel, I'll put it that way, uh, you have 90 million commercials, it seems like, that are stacked upon each other. And also, a additional influence of cold callers across the country and outside of the country. So in each of these areas, you have an opportunity that may be influenced by publicity, this one particularly, and it gives us the opportunity to exhibit our skill set and how we can explain that, well, okay, they aren't telling you the whole story or they're kind of blending things. Let's talk about what's available for you. So in each of these categories, it gives us an opportunity to vary our approach and make certain that we are comfortable with replying to the inquiries. That might sound really, really simple, but if we don't have that in our pocket with product and knowledge moving forward, it could be a challenge because folks, they're getting a pretty even split between MA and PDP or MA and MedSup, but we're seeing in the last couple, two, three years where the Medicare Advantage growth has outpaced to agree to a degree the Medicare supplement folks. But you got that population that's original Medicare only. What's that mean? Well, that could be folks that have retirement plans. It could be folks that have uh, coverage through the, the Veterans Administration. It might be folks that have a um, opportunity to be a dual beneficiary with just the government programs and medi medi in a manner of speaking. And then it's the old, uh, to quote an old sales manager of mine back in the neophyte days from Prudential that said, a decision to make a decision is a decision. We don't have anything. And you'll run across them upon occasion. They may have nothing in their 
coverage other than what comes naturally in a manner of speaking, they may be a different way for us to approach people based on the fact that, hey, we got a portfolio of plans that run from a zero premium up to and including whatever. So a, a different way of making certain that we can approach the folks based on product choice. We go through the different election periods. You know, we're two days away from the annual election period. Uh, I, I thank agents, you agents that are on the phone with uh, a consciousness in order to access this information originally here on a Friday afternoon. But that doesn't mean things are done. You have folks that will be making decisions to, oh, I got a little bit of buyer's remorse. I need to change my thought process. You need to be there for them. And how can we do that? We'll discuss that in a little bit. And then, of course, we go rolling into the OEP, that mystical period that allows people to change their coverage in the first three months of the year. But as agents, we can't promote it. We can't really even speak about it. And it is an opportunity for folks that are on MA plans mostly that they can change from one MA or an MAPD plan to a different one, or they can change their Part D coverage under that MA plan, which means you're changing the MAPD plan, or they can disenroll and go back to original Medicare. That is a different type of opportunity then that enables us to pursue that business based on, well, hey, you got options if you don't want your MA plan, here's what they are. And it gives us then the thought process of, hey, this is not an extension of the annual election period because it centers just on one segment of the population and their choices. And for some folks it, that might perceive a Medicare savings plan as part of it, uh -uh, it's a different animal here. So we're looking at folks here in this time period that are dealing with just enrollment in an MA plan. I like that one so much. I put two slides in there on the same one, pardon me. Um, so we have to put it in our mind that, hey, that's going on, but we're not using it as a marketing opportunity because you can't solicit for it anyway. There are folks that try and there are folks that get a little spanking when they do by different compliance oversight organizations. We want to make certain that we mention it and spend the time on it simply because you may hear about it or you may be thinking about it and say, hey, how can I use that? Well, you really can't is the big point on that. And we wanna make certain then that you realize that. And hey, if you're an agent that worked the, the Medicare Advantage Arena in, in the annual election period, you'll notice this is taken from AHIP. So it, it's, it's a repetition of things that you already know, but not a big deal because there are so many standard special election periods there for us to use. And it is the population that gives us an opportunity to properly market to them because there's one reason or another that we can reach out and visit with them. So you have people that are leaving a group. You have people that have moved from one area to another. There may be financial circumstances that allow for a change. You might be an area that has a five-star MA plan. A lot of reasons why a person can change and a lot of, I some folks don't like this term, but bear with me a get out of jail free card where they can change based on personal circumstance it's my personal belief that the majority of people on medicare would qualify for one special election period or another and our position would be is it in their best interest to do so and probably in many cases it will and we have carriers that help remind us of extra special special election periods and we get the communications all the time as a contracted agent. Some of them even go into great detail that's available to you through your marketing uh, sources here at Premier. Well, it's taken from a carrier. You can get it from a carrier as well. I don't mean to be it's all inclusive because we're from Premier. No, it's not. But you have different ways of saying, does this affect my target area? And if so, how can I use it for my advantage? Well, you need to use it for your advantage because the folks that had an opportunity through those seven weeks of annual election period, majority of them say historically, 
They didn't do anything. They didn't even review their plans. So they're part of the population that we can reach out and make part of our marketing efforts through the end of the year and throughout next year, up until the, well, through the annual election period next year. They didn't do anything. And what they're going to discover in January or February or whenever they start to use their plan again, depending upon their utilization rate, they may well discover there are changes either in the base coverages because of uh, Medicare Advantage handling their medical expenses and their drugs, or it may be someone that's still on traditional Medicare with a MedSup and their MedSup plan doesn't cover the drugs. It's that separate PDP program and they need to review that. We all are very cognitive of the fact that there are changes in PDP plans all the time, not just with the dollars, but with the formulary, with the drugs that are covered and how they're covered, what care they're on. And as people start to access their benefits, they're gonna need help. And how do we approach those folks um, to make certain that we're their resource? Because they're not using what the government puts out there, be it online, be it on, an app on their phone, be it on the documentation that's sent to them either electronically or or through the U.S. Postal Service on the, the Medicare Bible, the Medicare and you. Neat pieces that are out there are spreading the gospel in this particular circumstance. It gives us the ability to create that niggling feeling at the back of a person's neck saying, man, I should have checked some stuff out and I need some help as to what the heck are they saying with this? Acronyms. We want to make certain that we're communicating properly as well. And gee, this last piece that I pulled from CMS, that's showing 4,420 acronyms. We want to make certain we know what they mean as well and that we are aware of our use of this part of communicating benefits. And how are we addressing that? Are we making certain that the plans that we talk about are understood? And for some folks, you might go, oh, you're beating a horse here, John. But that's one of the ways that we can utilize our skill set, communicate properly with this population through our seminars and webinars and discussions that we have day to day with the population. How are we different? Well, we're helping them understand the choices that they have. We become that resource. And then folks, naturally will speak to others about us as well, no matter how we're presenting that information. Do you have the tools in your portfolio, the different pieces that can come into play that can make a difference on how you deliver that information? Are you gonna do it in the old uh, politicking style uh, across the kitchen table, shaking hands, kissing babies? Or are you gonna do it all virtually? Send it to them uh, electronically through whatever means and then as long as it's compliant, and then follow up with a Zoom meeting or a phone call or a mix of the two. Do you have the tools that are necessary to help carry out the delivery of that information? Because folks are trained to do things differently than they have in the past. Uh, many folks have become very aware of the fact that we can do telehealth or virtual meetings in that fashion with our providers, our doctors, our uh, specialists, our dentists, even hospitals are using virtual means to create a, a possibility of completing different pieces of uh, the, the delivery process, of healthcare delivery process electronically. And so folks are much more comfortable in receiving information in that fashion. Do we have the tools we need in this area to do just that? Well, let's find out and discuss some things with a little bit of lever levity. For those of you that know me, you know I have an odd sense of humor. And so some of these things are, hey, I want to be able to make the point so you remember different things as we plan for the near future. And that's necessary because as Alice discovered when she fell in the hole and asked Cheshire Cat which way I should go, he says, hey, it doesn't matter which way you go if you don't care where. So if we have our targets in place, we are then starting the very first part of planning for the near future. And many folks will take that and build upon it for, hey, I want to be at this point in time at the end of the year. 
I want to be at this point after two years, after three years, after five years, whatever it happens to be. What's your goal set, that path, that map to satisfying the needs that you have for yourself and those that are important for you? Because without a written goal, you will find, and studies back this, that you're not as successful. You know, if you're wandering about in the dark and without a goal, well, we can make that a bit more fruitful, we'll put it that way, by having goals and how do we set them. We want to make certain that we have in our mind what we want out of what we do. I know that might sound remedial as well, but part of it might boil down to money. Some of it might boil down to an intrinsic reward of how this satisfies me and what I want to do. And then where I need to be through different uh, points in the near future. We want to make certain that the goals that we set are attainable. And we'll talk about SMART goals here in just a moment but things that focus on where we want to be. And a lot of that, gee, John, how many times can you type money on this slide? Well, as much as we admire a social worker in many cases, we're not. We're in a professional business giving advice to folks and we're compensated for that activity. Hey, you even talk about that in presentations. Yes, I receive a commission on the plans that I utilize and that you enroll in. You then use some of those compensation dollars that you get from these different activities. And that can be used as a baseline as to how much your production needs to be to satisfy them for the bare minimums, what you'd like to do as well for your goals. So a a must-have goal and a stretch goal, in a manner of speaking, are very important for us to keep in mind as well, to the point where I want to beat this to death and say, hey, you got a plan. We got to make that next step. And we need to make certain that the goals that we set are SMART goals. Kind of a pun on some different things. You see this all over the place, but the goal needs to be specific. We need to define what we're looking to do. We need to make certain that we have parameters set where we can measure our success in attaining that goal because the goal needs to be attainable. You know, I shoot for the stars, you might, or shoot for the moon, you might land on a star. Well, yeah, sure you might, but uh, let's be a little more realistic is the word I was looking for there to make certain that we're able to do what we need to do. And we need to make certain that that is available for us to accomplish in a timely fashion. This is a piece that will be made available to you from Brian Tracy, his SMART goal guide that can help you to contemplate, to, to cogitate, whatever you think about where you are and where you want to be and how you can set those goals. The marketers within Premier, your agent success managers, will have this available for you. And uh, if you like, you can email me as well and I'll make certain that you get this document. Because, hey, this is a time period where, hey, it's a new normal. Things are different. Our delivery systems are different. Expectations for folks are different across the board, not just in prospecting, but also in our day-to-day -day activity with how we work with the people that are already our clients. So we need to be prepared for utilizing that as a growth opportunity and Use it as a possibility of putting us in front of not just someone with a service challenge, but that individual then may be revealing an opportunity for us to, to sell additional products to satisfy the needs that they're vocalizing. And then, of course, it gives us the opportunity to get in, folk, in front of folks that we haven't done business with in the past or haven't talked about before because we've sat down, we realize. These are some of the products that we need to make certain that we're comfortable with, and we're going to use them to market on an ongoing basis. Hence that whole opening screen uh, process with, gee, you got a lot of different products there with a lot of different companies. I don't need them all. Probably not. In some areas, you don't want them because they're specific to an area that's not part of your targeted uh, goal either. Regardless, 
If it's in the Medicare arena, we know of all the regulations that come into play, the scope of appointments and how we need to store them, the calling recordings, the way that we market. There are also regulations on some of the other products that aren't covered by Medicare. So if you're looking to offer life insurance, you know, you've got the fraud, waste and abuse requirement you have to satisfy. If you're looking at long-term care products, a different set of qualifications you have to satisfy in order to be able to offer those products. Do you have that as part of your portfolio? Do you want that as part of your portfolio? And if you do, who's going to help you? One of the reasons I really enjoy uh, my association with Premier Marketing because they have people in different areas that can help you understand what's necessary to offer the different programs that are out there and give you a chance to, to get the phone a ringing because the different products give you that opportunity because you're out there pursuing that opportunity. And it's the old uh, blind squirrel can find an acorn, but uh, the, to, to squash in another analogy, you don't get kissed if you don't ask. So how are we approaching it? So part of that goes into a piece that one of our associates, uh, the Hall of Famer Steve Young, would speak to us about, and that's preparation. And that is the blocking and tackling, the different pieces that are out there for us to use in order to be prepared for the opportunities that we got lined as part of our plan. So at this point in time, it pays to look back on this hectic period, if you're a Medicare agent in the last seven uh, weeks, what worked? How do we continue that as part of our program. What didn't work and why? How can we modify that approach to make it successful or recognize that, hey, uh, that dog didn't hunt. We need to look at something different. And then, of course, you have the discussions that you've had over this hectic period where some people will speak to the base need that needs to be satisfied, recognize the opportunity for other programs in that household. And we need to schedule, if we haven't already, that follow-up activity to make certain that we address those needs. And that can come from folks that have bought programs from us, worked with us in the past, or just discuss them. You don't necessarily have to be your client to do follow-up, obviously, because there may be uh, a circumstance where someone went and did their business elsewhere and then, hey, I changed my mind. So can we use our portfolio of programs, be it the ones that directly address that need, the base medical, whatever it happens to be, and then, gee, what happens if I go in a nursing home or I really need some dental work done? And hey, we've we talked about a, a Medicare Advantage plan that, you know, it has some benefit, but you know, I don't think it's enough. What do you got? So different things that can come into play there that can be helpful for you across the board simply by the clues that were given to us on the recent period. Go through your notes of the people that you chatted with. Um, you got a, a customer a database. We offer one as part of our programs without a cost. How can I utilize that to map out my activity based on what just recently happened? Basic math. You can plug in whatever numbers there may be. These are really conservative in their, their basis. Uh, $200 uh, a base commission of. Man, yes, yeah, I have to work to find one that's that low with some of the programs now. But it gives you then a way of working the math. Here's my goal when it comes to dollars. Here's what I normally make on a sale. How many sales do I need to make? my number that I have in mind for me on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And where am I going to get the folks to chat about that? The different areas that we can use to uh, make those numbers. So once again, part of it is too, we have to look at the fact that, uh, okay, you're a single uh, lady and you don't have some of the family concerns that others may have. You may have more time in that area. So how do I incorporate in that opportunity? Because some folks that have other uh, 
draws from them, so to speak, family obligations, things that are there. We have to use that as to um, how we can work our time, how we schedule different things. That might seem really remedial, but that base calendar gives us the opportunity to work through different events to fill that calendar, but make certain that we're still there for ourselves and for our families. If you're working a portfolio of products, this may be a even more focused way of, hey, how am I going to make the monies that are necessary for me? How am I going to make certain that the things come into play uh, and make certain that it works? Because there's a lot of information that's given here. Remember, this is being recorded. You will have access to this presentation and the goal setting stuff that I mentioned earlier will be available to you as well. But this then gives you, hey, I'm working more than just one product. I need to look at the different monies and how I balance our, my portfolio as well. So it gives us the opportunity to be realistic about what we're doing. And hey, are we going to do that? It's interesting, the folks that are in the Medicare arena, how many folks are, I'm an MA guy, or hey, I'm a lady that just offers Medicare supplements. You know, you got a different market that you're approaching in a, in a manner of speaking there then. And sometimes it, we need to step out of ourselves and into the shoes of the folks that we're visiting with to make certain that we're delivering upon their need according to their viewpoint based on the information we're providing on the programs that we have available. Math. Once again, how am I going to balance the products that I have and make them a stepping stone to making my goals? That goes beyond just the commissions and the dollars. It gives us then, hey, these are the numbers we need to do monthly or weekly in order to make our goals. But how are we leveraging these different areas to market? Are we using dental programs, a demand product, to get into the household, create that relationship? and then explore additional needs? Or are we being Joe Namath and concentrating just on Medicare Advantage plans? Or are we mailing for just Medicare supplement programs? Whatever it happens to be. Are we looking into life insurance on a wholesale basis or you know, a final expense program? In each of these areas, it can be a key component not just to make the numbers, but a way to make those numbers because of the marketing possibilities that come with it. So we also have to take into account uh, kind of a realistic look at ourselves, that the whole look in the mirror of, uh, uh, you know, that old Saturday Night Live skit, I'm good, I deserve it, that sort of thing. But what's our skill set once we get in front of folks? Can we improve upon that? Can we close at a higher rate? Can we make certain that we have folks in our cycle that are there because of our skill set, because we studied, because we're certified, because we're looking at the different possibilities based on the information they gave us, and we're able to deliver upon that and get better at selling, getting better at relating to our population. So we want to make certain that not only we have the products, not only that we have the appointments, but once we get in there, Another old sales manager from Prudential, as he used to say, are we ready to kill it today and eat it tonight? How can we close? How can we do things on a selling cycle that's acceptable to all involved? And then, of course, what tools can we do to get there? It is very important to look at our activity into the future, but also look back on what did I do this particular week? How successful was I? And how does that alter my future activity? How many of you actually carry around a calendar anymore? Most of the time, what we see with a whole bunch of folks is, hey, it's part, it's in my phone. I use this. I use the, the, the calendar that's part of my email system or whatever it happens to be. One thing that I might suggest that might sound really, really old school is have a base calendar that is physical for you and you plug in things that you're going to do on the second Tuesday of the month every friggin month 
you know it's there. It's part of your calendar and you plan around some of that activity. That might be related to business. It might be related to personal obligations or opportunities we have in that area because it's that whole work-life balance. Having some of the basics that we know are repetitive are plotted into our calendar and we plan around them because whatever we want to say and do through the annual election period, many folks are going, I need to step back and take a rest for a moment. In many cases, I'd advise doing that. But we want to make certain that we don't have a big hill in a valley. What we see a lot of times for certain agents is January, where you're finally compensated on that Medicare Advantage program that you sold back in October, because the government says you can't be paid until it's enforced at the first of the year. You get a little bit of that, boy, I got a nice check. I'm going to ride that a little bit. I'm going to sit back a little bit. You might need to. But that's a great opportunity to use that to market and sell on an ongoing basis to level out some of those peaks and valleys that we have as part of our the business that we do and make ourselves accountable for it. Are we in a partnership with another person in our agency? Are we in a partnership in our personal life and we have obligations to them? Or are you the lone eagle and you hold yourself accountable? So setting those goals in place and writing them down is an awesome step. But if you don't review them and you don't hold yourself accountable, yeah, yeah, well, didn't do you much good, did it? This gives us that opportunity. Some folks, there's a couple different trainings of thought here where you want the folks that are affected by what you do to be aware of your goals and have them support you. Some folks say, hey, I do better when I internalize this and I analyze it on an ongoing basis. So you got a plan in place. You got different things that come into mind as to what affects the numbers in that. Who's gonna hold you accountable to those great plans that you've put on paper and thought about and are working toward? Is it you? Are there other people involved? So we then then make certain that that calendar has all these different time constraints that make up our business the whole windshield time, if you're doing live appointments, um, the paperwork that's involved in follow-up or ahead of time to make certain that you have the programs that are there. That's part of your planning process. And there are many agents that will plug in a time period, uh, most of the time on non-selling peak hours that they can use to analyze how their time is being spent. Because there's a difference between being busy and being productive. And then of course, how can we make certain that our activity is productive? Are we ready to go? That whole thing that I've been harping on here a little bit already, are we trained on the programs that we have? Are we qualified for them? And are we using the resources that are out there within the community for marketing organizations such as ourselves, through the insurance carriers that we're working with, through some of the independent organizations that help train us, AHIP or, or different means if you're a life insurance agent, do I wanna be a CLU? Do I wanna be a certified life underwriter? All these designations that can come into play as well. Are we ready to go? And then how does that affect our selling opportunities, our selling closing, and our confidence in doing both? So those base programs, so important to do. And you may have discovered through the marketing that you did through the annual election period that, hey, I didn't need that then, but I need it now. So let's get her done. You have probably encountered in your target markets what's hot and what's not. You may have picked up some additional carriers through the annual election period to address that temperature variation. We'll put her that way. We have the resources that can help you with not only the certifications with the different carriers in the Medicare space if necessary, and then of course also the information about the plan itself and how you get there. Government's got these really cool programs too that can help us be comfortable in our space. And I bring this up for a couple of different reasons because they may well have the presentations we need 
to address the population we're targeting. I pull a lot of presentations from the Medicare Learning Network when it comes to, hey, you want to talk about Medicare 101? They got a really long, nice presentation. Sometimes it's a little dry, but you can put a little salt in it yourself and make it work uh, and still remain compliant. But they have different things there that can enable us to approach centers of influence in the community, either virtually or live, and say, hey, these are some of the things I do to help people be aware of their choices. I can do a presentation as to what is a Medicare Advantage plan? Why are these commercials confusing the heck out of me? And what do you have and what do you not have? Or how do I deal with drug costs? You know, that's a little expensive for me. I'm a low income individual. Is there any health programs out there? You that presentation yesterday on the, the Medicare entitlement programs, on the extra help plan for Medicare medications and for Medicare programs through the Medicare savings programs. So having that as a part of your arsenal enables you to market in that fashion and be effective with it. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. The presentations are there for you. If you're doing some ancillary products uh, in the dental world, man, there are companies out there that have it ready for you to go. If you're looking at some things where, well, my... My new client here is a little concerned with a hospitalization cost through their Medicare Advantage plan because they pay $175 a day for five days or whatever it happens to be. How do I address that? Do we have hospital indemnity programs that can do just that? Or does it require a change in their base program? Might be the best thing that's available to them based on a number of factors. Some of these hospital indemnity carriers, man, they got some programs out there that are just friggin' awesome. They walk you through the presentation so you can utilize that. So you have different resources in the community, but it includes pieces that you can pull from Medicare itself and make certain that we're communicating in the fashion that they understand it. That's one of the things that we deal with. All these acronyms, are they understanding what they're getting into? Are we communicating properly to make it work? This is a piece that many folks are unaware of or may have forgotten. There are pieces out there through CMS itself where you can create an account and they have different marketing pieces that are available to you without cost. They have different, uh, well, for one thing, you can order up to 50 calendars a month from them, CMS calendars. So you can use that as a, a tchotchke, a giveaway or, or swag or whatever you want to call it through your community meetings at no cost. That's the whole thing. When we talk about planning, one of the things I hadn't harped on is how much are you going to invest? Where are those dollars coming from? If you have something that's available to you without cost, obviously, hey, I'll take a cold if it's free. No, thank you, but you know what I mean. Carriers, man, some of them, they just supply stuff that is awesome. It's branded in certain circumstances. There are a number of them, however, that make the material available on a generic basis. It's one of the reasons I feature this particular carrier here because they have some great things available to you through their Medicare Made Clear programs, all available without cost. You have certain limits as to what you can order, how much you can get at a time, but your upline limits are higher. They can order more than you can. So if you have a big event working with the people that you work with to make certain that your supplies are there, well, hey, this is one way to do it. It's not just United Healthcare. It's a number of the programs that are out there that have this information. And once again, you don't have to recreate the wheel and you may not be out of pocket for the cost either. Some of them you got to pay for printing. Some of them you don't. Flyers, the base flyer, of course, is normally available without cost. A couple of carriers out there will actually help with replicating that flyer, making certain you have a supply of it. Sometimes that might be you going to, I don't know what they call it anymore, Kinko's in the old days, the coffee shop, in order to make certain that you have the detail that's necessary in community meetings, working with providers, wherever you're going to utilize that material in a compliant fashion. Once again, it goes back to, what do I have in my current portfolio and what do I need because hey I might have this product but I'm not getting the marketing support from this carrier they don't have some of the things you talked about John oh the dental plan I I work with 
They don't provide me a microsite. What are some of the other carriers that are available to you that do? And I'm not saying contract with every carrier under the sun. Good Lord Almighty. That would be a, a bit of a whooping to say the least. But if you recognize the strengths and weaknesses of your current portfolio, that's when you can target different carriers based on the product that they offer and the support that comes along with it. And that includes who do you work with for a marketing organization? I am really, really impressed with some of the material that we have available through our Medicare Center. And it's not just because, hey, I work with the organization. When I office, I office in the integrity office. It's, it's not that. You got a tool here that's available to you that gives you a universal login. So you don't have to remember 14 different logins that enables you to provide those side-by-side -side plan comparisons and do so compliantly because you've collected the scope, you've done the call recording, and you're storing it through this program for that 10-year period. And remember, that needs to be done if you sell somebody or not. But that gives us then the opportunity as we go back and we reflect upon our recent past activity. How can we improve? What was the pitch we used? How can I do this better? And then, of course, did you sell them? Okay. What else do they need? Did you not get their business? Okay, why? And what else do they need? Because it can be set up on a basis where you can utilize, once again, contact management, and they have switcher tags in there. So it identifies for you the prospects that you've put into the system in your client base. We don't access it. It's yours. And it does, however, give you that opportunity of, hey, in this particular market, there's a lot of people trending to this particular program. So you need to be aware of it to either sell against it in a manner of speaking or have it as part of your portfolio. And how do you reach out to them? Well, I keep talking about those microsites, the little presence on the Internet. It comes as part of that this program. You have a personal URL that's out there. You have the uh, voice in the desert crying out to people saying, hey, here I am. They can use it to do their own research based on the programs that you have available and to enroll as well. They're like, oh, they're enrolling in that website. I didn't talk to them even. Well, if they're enrolling through your website, you're going to get credit for them and you're going to talk to them afterwards because they'll have other needs. And how do we find those people? Well, the Lead Center program is a big part of that. It's a lead distribution program that you can access either on a live transfer or the, the leads that are sent to you in another fashion that you can turn on and off, however it is, nominal cost. They even have sales sometimes on these leads. And it's all part of your database that you already have, that customer contact management piece, that CRM, it's in that system. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to put them in the system. It's, a, it's there for you. And it, you can be more successful in closing those leads because there are other resources within Medicare Center that help you be better at what you do. It is available on a mobile application. And to quote the really annoying at this point in time, J.J. Walker, it's all available to you on a no-cost basis. It's free. It's available for you. And it is easy to do. We have different ways of making certain that you understand the processes. And, you know, it's like a, you got the guides that are there, the little, uh, pardon the expression, dummy guides. I use them all the time for one thing or another because it reminds me, well, that's why I need to do it that way to make it even more uh, successful for me. It also has within that system a way for you to cross sell. A really cool piece that hey, CSG is actually doing a webinar on this next Tuesday. I've done webinars on them on the past on using the system to fill in the blank. This is actually some things that agents will do during the sales process. Uh, here in Dallas, Fort Worth, we have one carrier that, dem that dominates the market. And they're not going to change their program. They want you to come in and make, you feel, make them feel better about the choice that they made. They're not moving. Is that still an opportunity? Oh, you betcha. 
because it has a hospital copay that's part of that program. You can select that plan that they're on. And here's some things that we can do to satisfy additional needs. We can fill those holes when you go in the hospital through a hospital indemnity program. You got dental coverage with that plan, but it's not enough. Here's a plan we can use to make that fit your situation. And remember, you're doing it through a multitude of programs, so you're not putting all your eggs in one basket. You're recognizing that there's not one solution for everyone. We have to step out from ourselves and make certain that we are delivering information so the folks that we speak with are making the, a, an informed decision based on what we're doing. We're professionals in what we deliver, and that not only solidifies that business, but opens us up for more because it's like, hey, this, this person, this agent's awesome. You need to talk to them. So are we able to do so and deliver that information once again on a basis that they want? I mean, a lot of folks now, if they're aging into Medicare, they're becoming much more, they're much more adept on doing things electronically. They're shopping ahead of time before they talk to you. Are you going to be able to do that, close that sale based on some of the tools that we have? We talked about, you know, the the direct uh, uh, way of enrolling people through uh, the plan comparison itself, or did I? Well, that's part of it. And that opportunity to use a pearl or whatever it happens to be. So we need to make certain that we're able to close that business once we successfully presented as well. And we can do so through a number of means. We can make certain that we're getting in front of people through varied processes in order to grow our business. And for some, they may still like Ma Bell and that relationship. They're going to reach out and touch somebody and they're going to dial. They got, it's, the answer rates are down quite a bit. Um, I've taken today well, only five calls today for one thing or another when it comes to uh, different options I have for my health care or for whatever. One gentleman, I want to help you with your investments. I'm like, uh, nope, but thank you. So if you're doing some telephone solicitation, be prepared for that. Great way to sharpen your skills and, and build up some scar tissue and actually touch some people. There are folks that still answer their phone. It's not dead. And we're able then to deliver on a list of people, not only that you've already talked with and that you're utilizing through that CRM through Medicare Center or what CRM you use, but fresh meat, so to speak. Do we have a contact list that's butted up against do not call and how do we use it? We can make that available to you as well. And it may well target centers of influence in the community. So in certain circumstances, let's move beyond a one-on-one -on -one selling situation. Are we going to use that experience we just completed our obligations with in a retail marketing situation through a carrier, through a particular organization? Or, well, hey, the ever-present Walmart program. A lot of the in-store activity with that program per se ended two days ago. If you drop activity with that particular uh, opportunity that you've experienced over the last seven weeks, I'm going to be a little judgmental and say shame on you. Because that's a great way for you to reach people that are new to the area, changing coverages. And that is all revealed through the relationship that you've built with the staff in that particular pharmacy, how we can utilize it through those types of referral basis. Are we still driving business to it? There are some organizations out there that will allow us to stay in the, the store on a less frequent basis, but on an ongoing basis. Are we leveraging that? And if so, are we making it not just a busy time, but a productive time? One of the things we find a lot as well is a, a source for people that are changing their coverages or new to the area or new to their plan is through the professionals that are delivering upon the benefits that we spoke of, the providers in the community. How are we approaching them? We have different programs that can help you with that. And it goes beyond just doctors. You will see as many of the dual special needs plans marketing activities ramp up, Many of those carriers will target not just doctors, but dentists as part of their ongoing campaign. Because, hey, 
I got a dual program. It's got a really great dental benefit. Power to you. But not everybody who goes to that dentist is on that plan or could be on that plan either. Do you have other programs that can help with their patient base that don't qualify for some of those programs that have that benefit? And it's a great way then of also tracking to how do we market to that provider themselves? We're talking about a pharmacist or a doctor. We're looking at somebody that's a little higher income and has different needs than many of the people. Are we addressing those needs as well across the board, however they are in the delivery system within our target market? You can find them through a number of different means. We have a, a webinar recorded and we were repeating it again in January on working with faith-based organizations. And so how do we find them? How do we approach them? How can we be successful with it? Watch for that, utilize that. Go to our, our website or our YouTube channel and find it or watch for it next month. Next month is coming up a lot quicker than we want in many circumstances here, but it gives us then the opportunity of once again, plotting out our plan for activity in the future. If you've worked with a carrier throughout AEP and you've done some business with them, they wanna do more business with you as well. And at this point in time, they may have some leads that came in too late, or they may have leads that respond to their ongoing marketing programs that are available to certain agents. Is that gonna be available to you? Well, I don't know. Have you made a relationship with the agent manager with that carrier in your market? They don't know you. Probably not gonna happen. You didn't do any business with them? Probably not going to happen. They're going to work with people that work with them as well. The whole quid pro quo, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours type of situation. But some of them actually have call campaigns based on some of the products that they have as part of their portfolio and that you can have as part of yours as well. We do offer different internet lead programs too that target final expense and Medicare. One of the things you find about social media is, yeah, you can get some really quick a microwave response, but in a lot of circumstances, they expect a microwave response. A conversation with an agent here this last month who, hey, I, I got this program going on, on Facebook. I had a lady raise their hand at 2.30 in the morning. I got back to them at six o'clock in the morning. And they said, well, you didn't get back to me. I went someplace else. So we need to make certain that not only we generate the lead, but that we can make it work for us no matter how it works. And that includes then taking that lead, planning it, and watching it grow and multiply. Because if we do some certain, certain things in our sales process that sets up a referral opportunity, we're taking that one lead and making it much more than that. And that can make a difference to us. And that includes not just our current sales cycle, but the folks that, once again, as we review our past activity, what happened? How did that work for us? We can go back to them and it's like, okay, I recognize that this may not have worked for you in the past. Do you know of other people that it might help? You don't have to be in bed with them, so to speak, for them to send you to other places. And we can do that if we just remember to ask. The Pepe Le Pew thing, you know, you don't get kissed if you don't ask. Direct mail, it's not dead. We just need to do it on a regular basis. It's kind of like exercise. If you do it once, you feel a little bit of the pain. If you do it regularly, you're going to see a different kind of response, and that helps us. And the programs we have in Premier can help you do that with the cost based on some production. That gives us then the opportunity to cross-sell because the letters that we're sending or the opportunities that we're presenting may not be our end goal. We're using dental to open the door. We've worked with Medicare programs, but I want to make certain that I have long-term care products or short-term care products on my book. Or, hey, I do a lot of final expense. How can I make that work across the board? Remember, studies show the more products that you have in a household, the higher your retention is going to be across the board. They don't have to be with the same company. They just have to be with the same agent, and that's you. So if we're stacking appointments in our, in our, on our, in our plan and we're in a particular area and, hey, one cancels out, how can I find other people in that area to make up for that? Well, you've got a T65 locator, a bit of a misnomer because you can change it for whatever age comes into play. You download it to your smartphone or your desktop or, or your mobile or your, your laptop, whatever it happens to be. 
you register, they recognize that you got a contract with us, it's available to you without cost. And then it'll map out people in a particular area with contact information, if you use it compliantly, that enables you to figure out, well, hey, this is an area that I can utilize, I can approach these people with a dental plan or a final expense plan because I can door knock those. Might well be a valuable tool for you to do too when you plan your overall activity because you don't want to bounce from one area clear to another. Back when uh, I was a captive representative with a carrier many, many years ago, I worked with another agent where we split the Metroplex, Dallas, Fort Worth, because it can be an hour and a half drive or more from one area to another if you're stretching across the whole of that geographic uh, target area. Stacking things, minimizing the the useless time of windshield time if you're doing face-to-face -face things and making certain then that in that particular area, I know of some of the questions that are going to come up. I know the hot plans. I know the providers in that area, and it can help me be more effective in my sales process. So you're doing that through Premier Marketing because we're going to make it easy for you to contract with different carriers that you recognize as a need. You create an agent profile, you have all your information in there then, and it gives you the opportunity to contract electronically, and that just speeds up the process, plain and simple. We also make certain that you have discounted errors and admissions coverage as a qualified agent. What makes you a qualified agent? They got a contract with us, but this isn't adding you to a blanket E&O policy for one program. This is a program that you own. We're a large organization. We have a very rich portfolio. We don't have everything. No one does, no matter what they might tell you, because there's always something new or, hey, why would you do that when it's, you know, whatever. This satisfies that requirement that you have with the different insurance companies in order to contract with them. And we also make certain that you have a means to keep your license in play through discounted continuing education through our association with WebCE. You can also add to your own benefit package by enrolling in a modified guarantee issue disability income plan for yourself on which you're being paid commission. So that's there as part of your own protection package, so to speak. Much as what I mentioned where today's presentation is being recorded, running a little long, we'll get to the end here really quickly, but it's being recorded and made available to you on our website and on our YouTube channel. So when we look at those different things that are an influence in our plan on an ongoing basis, or one trick pony, how can we be more effective with it? Well, I'll guarantee you in most cases, we've addressed that through past presentations or an opportunity to present something or receive it live on an ongoing basis because we do that regularly. We also wanna make certain that you're compensated fairly and to the maximum that is available to you. Medicare Advantage and PDP programs, well, the max comp for that set by the government, most carriers go with that. You can't get more uh, milk out of that cow, so to speak. However, you have marketing opportunities with MedSup. You have marketing opportunities with some of the ancillary programs that are incentives for you to do business with that particular organization. And with all things, other things being equal, hey, if I can make an extra 100 bucks by doing this with this company, and it's the same benefit, so to speak, I'll take those dollars. It might help me care, qualify for a carrier trip through that particular carrier and all that activity may, may well help us qualify for incentive programs through Premier as well. And that includes not just the marketing dollars, but we've brought back our trip, our agent trip as well. So it can make a big difference for you um, in maximizing the dollars that are available, the, the compensation that's available to you. It's a page all of, our, all of its own on our website. So go back. How can we leverage these different pieces to get to these different carriers for that extra compensation and reach out to them? That mail program that I referenced, well, based on production, it drives down the cost. You can qualify for it twice within a month based on activity in the health arena and in final expense. We utilize certain carrier or vendors in order to deliver that. We wanna make certain that the systems they have in play get you those leads back as quickly as possible. You got a little different mindset if someone's sending back a letter versus clicking something on the internet, but sometimes they mix it up. How can we get to those people as quickly as possible? Are they doing so compliantly? And 
do they have the outreach for the programs that we're looking to address? It's one of the reasons why we have different vendors because we've helped vet in those particular areas. There's also the opportunity that, well, hey, I want, I like direct mail, but I can't really afford a full campaign on myself or, hey, this fell a little short. How can I plug a hole? We have access to other lead programs that are direct mail, never touched outside and in addition to lead center that can make a difference for you to, to fill your calendar on an ongoing basis. That lead center can be really, really strong for you because it can deliver things in real time. It puts it right in that CRM. That is one of the things that we can't discount when it comes to what are my lead choices? Because once we have that lead, how can we make certain that we don't miss out on that opportunity? How can we make it part of our follow-up process? Having it as part of our CRM can make a big difference all on its own. I already spoke to this with the different lead programs that are available through the internet, through uh, Final Expanse and for Medicare, through the T65 locator to plug in different programs and the referral piece that is not just part of our sales process, but also part of engaging our book of business. That CRM I keep harping on, we go back and we visit with them for, hey, I've got a new dental program available in the area. Yada, yada. Oh, that's great. We'll take care of you. Here's how you can enroll in the program. Let's let's get you the information and make certain it's the, the proper thing for you to do. And here we go. And oh, by the way, who else could use that? We do this because we want your business. We want the opportunity to work with you. And we're asking for that on a regular basis. I'm asking for it now. I'd like to do our organization to do business with you. And it's simple to put this in play. Simple, but it takes some time too. We wanna to create that marketing plan, plug in all of the different factors that influence it and commit to it and move forward. Can you do it next week? Can you do it next year? Yeah, you can. Why not do it now? Put it in play. That's part of our decompression uh, process. When things are still fresh in our mind as to what worked and what didn't. Remember that part? It enables us to make certain that we're as productive as possible by creating that marketing plan and moving forward and utilizing the systems and the help that are there to do that. And we are one of those systems and the help to do that. So at this point in time, I'm gonna to check to make certain I didn't miss questions. I addressed a couple without saying, okay, here's your answer. Nope, oh, we're good. I wanna thank you for coming on and spending some time with us on a Friday afternoon. I've gone a little longer than usual, but for those of you that have done business with us in the past at Premier, I thank you for that business. We look to deepen that relationship and be even more successful in our joint ventures. For those of you that are looking at Premier for the first time, thank you for that opportunity. If you don't work with a, a Premier agent success manager or marketer within our organization, we're gonna make certain that you have a subject matter expert that can help you with the things that we discussed and make certain that if one person doesn't have the answer, are there other people available to do just that? And we can, and we wanna make certain that that's available to our current agents that we work with and new folks to us moving forward. But most of all, at this point in time, I wanna thank you for the time that you spent with me. I really appreciate that investment. I think if you implement, if not a full-blown adherence to some of the things that we suggested, take a piece or two and insert it into what you're doing now and help it make you even more successful than you are. So at this point in time, until we're able to visit with you again, watch for our webinars next week. I got one on dual special needs plans, some really neat things that can help you. I thank you until we're able to chat once again. So at this point in time, I wish you good selling. Thanks so very much. We'll talk to you soon.